HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on H Camp. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, John Ritz on camera, and we are set to get underway between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Westwood Wolverines. And taking the mound for the Hopkinton Hillers is Brendan Kelly. Brendan Kelly is set to deliver the first pitch. John Hannon, the second baseman for the Westwood Wolverines. We're on our new broadcast platform today. And it's a beautiful day for baseball. Temperatures in the 60s and we are underway. The lineup and the pitch. And there for a strike, one and one, to John Hannon, the second baseman. We'll get you the Westwood Wolverines lineup in just a moment. <laughs> Kelly delivers. Down low. Let's take a look at the Westwood lineup. John Hannon, the second baseman, leading things off. Jimmy Bean, the shortstop, batting second. Shane Cronin, the pitcher, hitting third. Kevin McDonald, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Cal Guarino, the third baseman, is hitting fifth. Batting sixth, the center fielder, Ryan Shen. The right fielder, Cam Dayton, is batting seventh. Dan Delory. The left fielder hitting eighth, and Jacob Nunez, the catcher, hitting ninth. Is that pitch outside? That'll fill up the count. Got to watch out for Brendan Kelly early. See if he's got his breaking ball working. His slide is working. Coach Simos might have him throw two in a row. A ball and glow. It's a walk. So Hannon draws the walk. That'll bring up Jimmy Bean. Stevie Simos behind the plate. We'll keep the runner in check. And we'll have uh, you read off the Hillers defense in just a moment as Brendan Kelly works from the stretch. Runner leading off of first. And that is hit high in the air over to the left side. The shortstop Ben McKenzie ranges over and makes the catch out number one. Larry, why don't you tell us about that Hillers defense? Sure, Tom. Ryan Kester's playing third base today. Ben McKenzie is at short. Pat Breton at second base. At first base, Alex Barker Hook, left field. Drew Rancatori, center field. Tommy Amber Sony, I'll get it right one of these days. And right field, Connor Kelly. Here's the pitch. That's a called strike. Brendan Kelly on the mound and Stevie Simos behind the plate today. Wind is blowing out, so Ben McKenzie had a little trouble with that high, high pop-up from Hannon. There's a line drive in the left field. That gets down. Yeah, you can tell it's a bit windy today as my lineup blew away. That'll put a uh, two on, a single for Shane Cronin, the pitcher. Kevin McDonald, the first baseman, will step in. John Hannon advances to second base. Cronin heading out to uh, California to a Division II school, I'm told, the Westwood coach. He's their number one pitcher, facing Hopkins' number one pitcher. Pitch outside, ball one. Hopkinton Hillers are four and one on the season. They got a nice win over Bridgewater Raynham yesterday. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit up the right side and caught by the first baseman. A nice catch there by Alex Parker Hook. That ball was tailing away towards the right field line. Made a good play on it. That'll bring up Cal Guarino, the third baseman. We're broadcasting live today, right, Tom? We certainly are on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. We may have a viewer from Rome today. Ah, terrific. The more the merrier. 
Westwood is one and one on this season. And they were kind enough to add all their statistics to their uh, team page. Not. There's a nice pitch on the outside corner. That's a break of pitch Kelly's got to got to get that call for. Brennan Kelly, a 175 ERA, 1 and 0 oh on the season, one appearance on the mound. Working from the stretch. Delivers inside. Backed him up. That's what Coach Simons will do with Kelly if he's feeling that curveball. He'll call curveballs back to back and sometimes back to back to back. Kelly from the stretch, delivers down low. Just missed on that one. Two outs, two on for Westwood here in the top of the first. Outside. Stevie Simos kept that one close. Knew exactly where the ball was. Runner didn't even make an attempt. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up. First game on the grass field for the varsity team this season. A pitch outside, full count. I tested out the field conditions earlier. I didn't like it. Some gopher holes out there. The fielder's got to be mindful of that. Grass certainly well mowed though as there's strike three for out number three. We will head to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless here on HCAM. Set for the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless here at Hopkinton High School. Let's take a look at the Hillers batting order. Leading things off is the shortstop, number 12, Ben McKenzie. The catcher, Steven Simos, batting second. The center fielder, Tommy Ambersoni, hitting third. The left fielder, Drew Rancatori, hitting cleanup. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, batting fifth. Bobby Pagliuca, the DH, hitting sixth. Ryan Kester, the third baseman, hitting seventh. Alex Barker-Hook, the first baseman, hitting eighth. And Pat Breton, the second baseman, hitting ninth. How about that Westwood defense, Larry? Well, we'll give it a go. The coach, Westwood coach, handwriting stinks, but it's Cal Nago at third base, Jimmy Bean at shortstop, John Hannon, that's easy, at second base. Kevin McDonald at first base, Dan Devaney in left field. Ryan Shea in center, Cam Dayton in right, Jacob something or other behind the plate, and Shane Cronin, the Division II prospect on the mound. I think you did a nice job there. Yeah, uh, we'll give, do the best we can. Ben McKenzie will step in. Always a threat to bunt. Five-tool player heading off to Bowdoin College to play baseball with Stevie Simos. Senior is four for 10 on the season at the plate. Five runs scored, six driven in. Inside. Hope all your Twitter followers are uh, dialed in. Hopefully. There's 24 million Twitter, Twitter followers. Yeah. And this is hit high in the air over to the right side. The second baseman battling the sun will make the catch. It'll bring up Steven Simos, the catcher, one away. Stevie Simos has got a home run this year. Really good power. To the gap. And this is up the right side, gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first, four to three, four out number two. And it'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder. Shane Cronin, the pitcher for Westwood, set to deliver. And this is up the left side, slow roller. That's a fair ball picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first. And it's in time. A nice play by the third baseman, Guarino. 
One, two, three, they go. To the top of the second we go. We're scoreless here at Hopkinton High School on HCAM. Top of the second inning, six, seven, and eight. Due up for the Westwood Wolverines. To reach last inning for Westwood, but no run scored in the first inning. Brennan Kelly out there for the Hillers. Just about set to deliver to the center fielder, Ryan Shen. Ryan Shen, Cam Dayton, and Pat DeLore do up. All three outfielders for Westwood. A swing and a miss there. Kelly set to deliver. Just outside. One and one. That pitch just a little bit high, two and one. Inside. Looks like Brennan's throwing his classic 84 to 86 miles an hour. Three one. And that is strike two. Ryan Shen thought he had the walk there. He gets the bad news from the home plate umpire. Well, you know what they say, don't start walking towards first base until you get the call. Yeah, you're gonna get on the bad side of the umpire. Swing and a tip into the catcher's glove for out number one. That'll bring up Cam Dayton, the right fielder. Swing and a miss. Nice curveball by Brendan Kelly. Let's see if it's true to form. Coach Simo's going to back that up with another one. And this is hit into center field. That'll get down for a one out hit. Cam Dayton is aboard. And that'll bring up Dan DeLore, the left fielder. Both hits by the Westwood hitters have been. Hard hit balls, no cheap, he's there. And this is a slow roller up the first base side. That's a fair ball, picked up by Kelly, flipped to first, and they got him. Nice play by Alex Parker, hook, barehanding that underhand throw from Brendan Kelly. So one to three for out number two. Cam Dayton advances to second. One on, two outs. Jacob Nunez, the catcher, steps in. Kelly from the stretch. Checking at second. The runner had a big lead. The ball was thrown into center field, but it was quickly gathered up by Ambersoni. I don't think that's what Brendan intended to do. But no harm, no foul. At least the runner will know that uh, he can make an inside move. Wind up in the pitch. In there for a strike. Just slow. Looks good to me, look good to me. I'm not biased or anything, but that looked good to me. I thought it was a little low. Set to deliver. Up the left side, and that is a foul ball. Scoreboard operators not keeping balls and strikes. Stevie Simos asked for the count. Counts one and two, says the umpire. Did you know that? I Counts did. one and two. Two outs. One, two pitch. Just high. 
Two and two now. My understanding is Cole Glassburn will be the first out of the Hopkin and bullpen. Hope we don't get to that. Just outside. Counts full. Certainly is. Wind seemed to turn around a little. Now it's blowing in our face. And this is up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop after it takes a hop. Throw to first, he got him. A six to three out to end the top of the second. To the bottom of the inning we go. We're scoreless here in Hopkinton on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, due up for the Hillers is four, five, and six. Drew Ancatori, Connor Kelly, and Robbie Pagliuca. Ancatori steps in. So far this season, he is one for 11 at the plate. Here's a strike. Corona doesn't look like he's throwing particularly hard, but he's got a real pretty delivery, nice and smooth from the lefty. It's breaking pitch outside. There's a strike. Shakes off the first sign. It likes the second and delivers. Foul tip. He would not be what Coach Simos calls a crafty little lefty. That one in the dirt, two and two. Not afraid, not afraid to throw his breaking pitch, though. Makes his fastball look three or four miles an hour quicker. Cronin deals just outside, full count. Full count pitch. And this is hit foul up the right side. That ball is a goner. Off in the distance, the Hillers Unified Track Team is having a meet with Algonquin. Certainly wish the best of luck to the Hillers Unified Track Team. And Rankatori draws the walk. It'll bring up Connor Kelly, the right fielder. Good eye by Drew Rancatori. Certainly was. Connor Kelly at a 400 mark on the season. Two for five at the plate. Four runs scored, one driven in. Checking at first, runner returns. Coach Simos letting Drew Rancatori know that that was not Cronin's best move, so be careful. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is a good one. Is it in time? No. Stolen base for Rancatori, but boy, was it close. Good throw by the catcher, Jacob Blank. Nunez. Nunez. Big lead off of second for Rankatori. Oh. And that hit the batter. Or actually, did it hit the bat? Did not hit the bat. Hit his elbow, I thought. And the hitter is saying that it hit him, but the umpire is saying he heard bat. I heard flesh. I respectfully disagree. <laughs> well, break for Westwood there. Connor Kelly was very impressive on the mound yesterday to close things out against Bridgewater Raynham. He is the real deal. And this is hit high in the air over to left field and foul. 
home plate umpire walking down the third base line to get a good view. Fair or foul? Kelly finds himself in the hole. Down two strikes. Set to deliver. Down low. This umpire's got a really, really tight strike zone. I'd say. I would have rung him up. That's why they're not paying me to umpire, though. <laughs> Robbie Pagliuca on deck. Pags, favorite player. Beaten foul. Pagliuca, crowd favorite in a dugout favorite for his timely hits. Set for the 2-2 pitch from Cronin. Check swing, did he hold? Yes, he did. Runner taking off as the ball got away and Rankatori safely aboard at third. What are you giving that one, a wild pitch or a pass ball? Nah, he, he spiked that right in front of the plate and had spin, so it'd been a tough one to block. Certainly would have. Now Rankatori in scoring position. The infield playing back, so they're gonna concede the run. And that's fouled off. Nice fight by Kelly. Kelly and Crone and a couple of Irishmen. Hootman, Hootman. Or is that Scottish? Set to deliver. And this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops on the infield grass. Picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first. They got him, but the run does score. A sacrifice ground out for Kelly. And the Westwood coach is banking on the fact that Cronin's not going to give up too many runs today. So why not concede the run? one nothing lead for the Hillers, and Robbie Pagliuca will step in. Three for six at the plate this season. Two runs batted in, three scored. Double to his credit. Actually, these stats, I don't believe, were updated from yesterday's game, but nope. leading into this week. Pags is a free swinger. I do like our vantage point from our uh, perch up here. Just going to need to make a one little modification. Yeah, we apologize for a bit of an obstructed view. Still a uh, work in progress. Pitch down low, one and one. I'd like to thank Rich Sasitsky for spending some time before the season started, building our little uh, nest here. Line up and the pitch. Upstairs. Two and one. This kid's a taller version than that kid, Coons or whatever his name was from Duxbury last year in the playoffs. That one just outside, three and one. Coons was a very impressive junior last year. He ended Hopkinton's playoff run. Another outside pitch there and the walk is drawn up by Robbie Pagliuca. One out walk, run already in for the Hillers. That'll bring up Ryan Kester. Not a threat to steal Robbie Pagliuca. Kester heading into the week was four, was three for seven at the plate. Didn't do anything yesterday, so he's still three for maybe 10. Four runs scored, three driven in. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. First base coach is gonna be a little closer to the action over there. Bottom of the second inning, Hillers leading Westwood, one to nothing. Good. Coach Simos wants Pags to stay close. Outside. Also a tremendous win last night by the Bruins, taking down the Maple Leaves to advance on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. 
Yeah, there certainly was. Julian Edimo was waving the flag. Ball's outside. Did you catch any of the game, Larry? Uh, no. I was practicing my hurdling. And they, they asked me to uh, participate in the next track meet. Oh, I thought you were practicing your broadcasting. Oh, yeah, I did that yesterday. Swing and a miss. Two and one on Kester. For those that want to tune in to yesterday's game for, on YouTube, it was about a three-hour affair. Slow as molasses, in other words. And softball and baseball yesterday. And that pitch down low. Softball team also in action today against Westwood. They beat Norton, yes? They did, five to two. Great game. Katie Holly made a tremendous defensive play. Checking at first, runner slides back just safe. That's the better move from Cronin. That's the one Coach Simos is worried about. Although, uh, Pags is not a threat to steal, so don't waste those pickoffs. That's fouled off. I thought Cronin would be um, more overpowering than he is. He came in with the uh, reputation of being the number one D2 prospect or commit, but haven't been impressed with his velocity. Full count pitch here. And this is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down for it. It's going to be two runners on with one out. Single for Kester. That'll bring up Alex Barker Hook, the first baseman. Barker Hook got into yesterday's game through an inning. There's three, four, nine at the plate heading into the week. And a check in on the runner there. You won't throw over. But some big leads being taken by Pegliuca and Kester. That pitch is down low. Nice patience on the part of the Hiller hitters so far, making Cronin work. It's not like it's a blazing hot day, but more pitches he throws, the, the less they'll have to throw later. Line up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Look like Alex was looking for a little parking lot action. One and one's the count. Both runners with a slight lead. And this is hit high in the air over to center field. And it is caught by Shea for the second out. It's a really high sky today, Tom, almost cloudless. The shortstop looked up and lost lost the ball, but it was went to the center fielder, so it wasn't even in his range, but he lost, lost track of that ball. We'll bring up the second baseman, Pat Breton, who's 0 for 1 heading into the week. Nice to see the athletic director, uh, the wonderful D. King coming down today. Ball low. One and O oh is the count. Ben McKenzie waiting on deck. Drew Rankatori came around to score earlier in the inning off a sacrifice ground out by Connor Kelly. Ball gets game. away. Ball gets away from the catcher. Both runners will advance. Pass ball there. And a wild pitch there. He just he just muffed it. Runners advance. Base hit will score two. The 2-0 pitch. In there for a strike, late call on that strike. First look at Breton. If he's in the lineup, Coach Simos has got confidence in him. Looks like there is uh, someone starting to get loose for Westwood over in the warm-up area. Just in case. Cronin runs into any trouble. Coach Simos wants each batter to compete. That's his word he always used, just compete. The 
swing and a miss. And that will wrap up the inning. The Hillers do play to run, and they lead it one to nothing as we head to the top of the third on each cam. Top of the third inning. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Due up for Westwood, top of the order, John Hannon, Jimmy Bean, and Shane Cronin. Brendan Kelly has pitched two shutout innings so far. And he delivers inside to Hannon, one and zero. Oh. Set to deliver. Down low. Kelly's been pretty economical so far. So there's warm up activity again for Westwood down the right field line. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside, three and zero. Oh. Hannon did walk in the first inning. This is the only plate appearance. Kelly deals inside, and Hannon will draw his second walk of the day. That's the job of a leadoff hitter to get on any way they can. Hit, walk, hit batsman, anything. I'll bring up Jimmy Bean, the shortstop. He lined out in his only at bat. Ben and Kelly's got a pretty decent move over to first. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. The lead runner held up at second. So it'll be two on with no outs for Westwood. Hannon over at second, Bean at first, and Shane Cronin to the plate. No cheapies off the Westwood bats today. It's first bit of trouble, I doubt the three hitter will be bunting, but we've seen crazy stuff before. Kelly working from the stretch. That is ball one. Warm up action continues for Westwood. We got another lefty down there. In there for a strike, one and one. The umpire's giving you a little deek, isn't he? Yeah, he, sometimes he takes a little while to make his call. Just ask me, I'll tell you before he calls. <laughs> I don't know, some of the calls have been kind of unpredictable. <laughs> Kelly deals. And this takes a hop in the infield, a slow roller and everybody's going to be safe. And that was just a tough ball to make a play on. Bases juiced for Westwood, no outs. Kevin McDonald, the first baseman will step in. That's a cheapie. It certainly is. It took a hop on the dirt before the grass. And it was just a awkward infield hopper. Infield's back, so they're gonna concede a run on the on the ground. Swing and a miss. Ooh, feel the breeze. Oh and one on McDonald. We'll see what the leash is with uh Kelly shall he run into any trouble this inning. Bases loaded, no outs, upstairs. He wanted to throw that one right through the backstop. Got to bring it down a little bit there, Brendan. Certainly has good velocity today. A little bit of adrenaline opening day. Inside. Room with the break and pitch. It's a big deal playing on regular Regular grass, dirt, rather than that turf, or whatever you call it over there. It'll be interesting to see what the players like better. Well, the broadcaster, this one anyway, likes natural. I agree. But it's certainly great having 
the turf baseball field because it was certainly going to help in the case of rain. Or That's if, true. If you have a rainy few days. No bad hops, though. Ball gets hits a gap and it's autom automatically to the wall. I just don't like it. I'm not a big fan. 3-0 pitch, and this is up the left side. That'll get through. One run is in. A second run being waved around. The throw in's going to be cut off. It's 2-1 Westwood. A two RBI single for Kevin McDonald. And there's still no outs in the inning. John Hannon comes around to score, and Jimmy Bean. Shane Cronin up to second, and that'll bring up Cal Guarino, the third baseman. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to be with you on this gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. John Ritz on camera. Westwood leading the Hillers 2-1. to one. Brandon Kelly from the stretch. Infield in on the corners. Middle infielders with double play depth. Bunt pulled back, 1-0. Runners on first and second still for Westwood, no outs. Got some fans down the left field line. We get the pavilion starting to fill up behind home plate. How much are those pavilion uh, tickets going for now? Well, right? they're very, very expensive. Something you can't afford on your salary. Here's a bunt. That's going to be caught by Simos. Nice catch by Simos to get the first out of the inning. Like a cat back there. Pop right out of his crouch and grab that bunt. We'll bring up the center fielder, Ryan Shen. Or Ryan Shea, excuse me. See? Bad, bad handwriting bad by handwriting. the Westwood coach. <laughs> Shen. Well, I can't say no, yours yeah, is much better. <laughs> well, <laughs> mine's not any better either, so. We all understand our own handwriting. That's true. No one else does, but we do. Nope. Line up and the pitch. Outside. The umpire's really, really tight. He does a nice job of keeping home plate clean. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here at the baseball field. Fouled into the backstop. One and one. Brenda can get out of this inning by just giving up two, two runs. That'll be a victory, be a win. Kelly deals. Ball Down low, gets, gets by the catcher. Both runners going to advance. So that'll put two in scoring position for Westwood. McDonald up to second, Cronin up to third. Might have to give that one a wild pitch. Yeah, I'd say. Infield playing back again. They're going to concede the run if it's hit on the ground. And yeah, that's tipped foul. Two and two. <laughs> Kelly from the stretch. Line up and the pitch. And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass and the flip to first. Not in time, everybody's safe and a run scores. Well, there was a little hesitation there by Breton. Well, Kelly was there, it was just the ball was hit so slowly. Killed a few worms getting down the line. Yep. Stevie Simos. Uh, I can decide if you could go home with it, I think, or over to third. McDonald advances to third. It's a 3-1 Westwood lead. Cam Dayton, the right fielder, steps in. Middle infielders know what's going to happen here should the runner take off. And there's a strike. Runner takes off from first, throw to second. In time! Caught stealing. A great throw from Simos. One, one hopper. I thought he had the bag swiped. 
pretty surprised with that. I mean, with the momentum Westwood has going right now and the runner at third, you would have thought that they would have been a little more conservative there. Just outside. That ball was thrown so slowly, I mean so low, and uh, it was picked on the on the hop, breaking ball up. Runner from third could have easily scampered home, but maybe he was deked out by the low throw. Thought the ball was going to be cut off. Kelly deals. Ooh, yeah, I think that hit the batter. I think it did too. It hit his helmet. Yes. Oof. Fortunately, he's okay. Coach Simo's going to take a trip out and settle Brendan Kelly down. It'll bring up Dan Delory, the left fielder. And he's taking the baseball. We could have a pitching change here, and it looks like we will. So that'll be the day on the mound for Brendan Kelly. We'll have a new pitcher for the Hillers, and we'll let you know who that is when we come back on H Camp. My name is Claire. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. I love H Camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. New pitcher for the Hillers, Cole Glassburn, will take over on the mound for Brendan Kelly. Kelly went two and two-thirds of an inning, giving up two walks, hit a batter, three runs scored, and he gave up six hits. Glassburn will take over. Kelly's still responsible for the runners on first and third. Coach Simo still keeping his humor. Told Cole he had bases loaded with two out. Glassburn delivers inside, one and out. Then he told him after he realized it, man on bases loaded with nobody on second, he said. So, different styles, Kelly and Glassburn, clearly. And this is hit in the air over to left field. Going to be a tough play to make, and that's going to get by the dive of Rankatori. A run is in to score, and... The lead runner advances to third. And it's going to be a 4-1 Westwood lead. An RBI single for Delore. He advanced the second on the throw in. I think Drew thought the ball was hit harder than it really was. And then once he realized that he had to make a, a mad dash for the ball, dove and just missed it. Jacob Nunez, the catcher, takes ball one. Glassburn's got a really lively Hose out there and come at you from many different angles. Drop down the side like that. And this is hit high in the air over to right field and it's caught for the third and final out of the inning. Westwood did bat around and they plated four runs and they lead the Hopkinton Hillers four to one on H cam. Bottom of the third inning, the Hillers with some work to do as they trail four to one Two up is the top of the order. Ben McKenzie, Steven Simos, and Tommy Ambersoni. Shane Cronin continues to work on the mound for Westwood. I think the Ben McKenzie vehicle of the day out in left center field is that uh, enclosed pickup truck, that burgundy one. That's where Ben likes to hit him. Pitch down low, one and oh. He's got one home run on the season so far. Line up and the pitch. Inside. Two Both him and Stevie Simos, if they get on by a walk, you can consider that a double. There's a strike, two and one. And there's another strike, two and two. Ben didn't obviously agree with that call from the home plate umpire. Swing and a miss. Tied him number up. Number one. 
Not a very good looking swing there. Steven Simos will step in, the catcher. 0 for 1 so far today. Stevie Simos playing mind games with the pitcher again. Line up and the pitch, and this is it. High in the air, over to center field, and that ball was crushed. It's going back, back to the wall, and that's gone. A home run for Steven Simos. It's a 4-2 to two ball game. He crushed that ball. I didn't think it would get, it, get out as soon as he hit the ball, but kept nope. going, going, going. I think the wind helped a little bit. Might have, but wasn't a cheapy. That's about 360 feet out where that outfielder was. That's the deepest part of the ballpark. And uh, close to it. <laughs> and the outfielder did, took a header over the fence there. <laughs> That's true. We got our money's worth with that one. Ball was hit a mile high. I thought it was going to get maybe... Uh, off the fence, but he was able to power that one over it. That's just what the Hillers needed there. Steven Simo showing off the power. His second dinger of the year. That should help his slugging percentage some. Certainly should. And Rossoni steps in. Down low. So the score's been halved. Four to two. Line up and the pitch, down low. Doesn't look like Cronin expends a lot of energy out there on the mound, unlike Brendan Kelly who puts everything, all his 220 pounds in every pitch. Ground ball foul. Two and one's the count. Tommy had a nice season down at post 59. That's a strike. It's going to return Milford Legion. Coach really liked him. 2 2 pitch. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. The right fielder not able to get there. And here he goes over to second base, and Ambrosoni will stop there. It's a Stand up to double, no, he's gonna advance to third as the ball is nowhere to be seen. I don't know what happened there, but I think he's gonna be sent back to second. Yeah, the right fielder put up his hands. That might have been the ground rule if the ball gets stuck underneath those bleachers down there. He would have had three had it stayed in play. So it will be a one out double for Ambersoni. And the tying run is at the plate. Drew Rancatori, the left fielder, will step in. See if we get any stirring in the Westwood bullpen. They had warm up activity earlier. We did indeed. The lefty set to deliver. Bunt pulled back, one and oh. Even big, being elevated like we are right here, we had a good, really good look at that ball, where it was going. I like our perch. I'm real happy with it. Glad you're happy. It certainly is a great vantage point. This is hit high in the air over to the right side. The second baseman ranges back and makes the catch. Two away. That'll bring up Connor Kelly, the right fielder. That was hit a mile high. I thought the wind was gonna play with that one. Our ace cameraman, John Ritz, probably got a good shot of that. He's telling me no. Cronin set to deal. Runner with a pretty substantial lead off of second, that pitch down low. Amber Sony over at second base. There's a called strike, one and one. Coach Simo says he's a future college player, Connor Kelly. We saw his pitching yesterday. There's a swing, and that's hitting the gap in right center field. That's going to go all the way to the wall. 
Galley turns first and comes into second base with a double. Thanks for chipping in on play-by-play, -play, Larry. Well, it got caught in the middle. <laughs> got caught in the middle there. Sorry about that. That'll make it a four-to-three game. It was, and we're going to have a pinch runner. RBI double for Connor Kelly. He got rid of his batting gloves because he oh. runs faster without the gloves. So he is back out there as Bobby Pagliuca is set to step in. This is where Robbie shines. Tying run on second base. That ball got out to right field in a hurry. Down low, one and oh. There's a called strike, one and one. Followed into the backstop, one and two. Base hit here, the crowd will go crazy. Two runs have scored in the inning for the Hillers. It's a 4-3 Westwood lead. Time called by the hitter. Warm-up warm activity is going on down the right field line. Same lefty throwing. Line up in the pitch. Fouled away. Ryan Kester on deck. Count remains one and two. Cronin set to deal. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the air over to left field. That ball was crushed to the fence. And that is going to be a long base hit there and a run will score to tie the game. Robbie Pagliuca. An RBI double for Robbie Pagliuca. And fans Connor go Kelly crazy. is around to score. Oh, the fans are on their feet. Ryan Kester will step in. Pitching change. Yeah, it does look like we will have a pitching change before that happens. But it's a brand new ball game here in the bottom of the third. That's a, a four surprise. to four ball game. Three runs have come around to score for the Hillers and we'll have a new pitcher for the Westwood Wolverines. And we'll let you know who that is when we come back on HKM. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Gil Garrett is the new pitcher for the Westwood Wolverines. He comes in for Shane Cronin. Shane lasted two and two-thirds of an inning, gave up four runs, all of them earned. Stepping in the batter's box is Ryan Kester. Down low, it gets away from the catcher and the runner at second is going to advance. Robbie Pagliuca now at third. You had the game tying double to drive in Connor Kelly. That was a pass ball. Line up and the pitch. Inside, gets away from the catcher. Two and oh. Not a whole lot of velocity from this fella. It's impressive the Hillers chased Cronin. Garrett delivers outside, three and oh. We're knotted up at four here in the bottom of the third. Three runs have scored so far for the Hillers. There's a strike. Three and one. Go ahead, run is just 90 feet away. 
Gets a piece of this one up the right side. That's going to get through the gap. And the Hillers take the 5-4 lead as Pagliuca comes around to score. An RBI single for Kester. That'll bring up Alex Barker Hook, the first baseman. Hiller is trying to keep the rally going. Garrett set to deliver. Runner with a bit of a lead off of first will force Garrett to step off the mound. Light up and the pitch. Outside. Good take by Barker Hook. Usually if you see a pitcher just step off the back of the rubber, it means they don't have confidence in their move. Outside. What the pitcher may do is hold on the ball a little bit longer, alter the times to the plate if they don't have a good lefty move. 2-0 pitch. In there for a strike. Barker Hook agrees. The 2-1. Checking at first, he picked him off. Advancing to second, and the throw in time. So they catch Kester in the pickle, and they get him out at second base for the third and final out of the inning. But the Hillers played four runs in the inning, and they lead Westwood five to four, heading to the fourth inning on HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, the Hillers have reclaimed the lead. It's a five to four game. And stepping in for Westwood is John Hannon. Cole Glassburn back out there. Came in last inning after Brennan Kelly gave up the four runs. And he is set to work against the leadoff hitter who has walked twice so far today. In there for a strike. Cole's a very entertaining kid to watch. He'll throw a regular fastball, three quarters, drop down the side, even drop under, submarine style. Strike two. He's got a curveball, obviously. And then he does something weird with his lead leg. He'll kick it out a little bit. Hesitate. Quick pitch. That was inside, one and two. He did that in the Holliston game. He quick pitched a couple of, hit, a couple of hitters. They were surprised. And this is up the middle, takes a hop off the mound and it is dropped by the second baseman. Tough ball to play as Hannon will reach on the, I'm giving him a single. I just think that was a tough play to make. Wouldn't have happened on turf. The turf giveth and it taketh away. Jimmy Bean will step in, the shortstop. Checking at first, runner back safe. The ball was not exactly uh, scalded out there towards second. In there for a strike. The one one checking at first. Runner slides back safe. Cole uses up a lot of energy out there when he pitches, so we'll see how many pitches he has in his his gun today. Glassburn deals. Swinging strike. Set to deliver, down low. 
There you saw Cole's little hesitation pitch right there. And this is up the left side. Glove by the third baseman, Ryan Kester, but he doesn't have a play. Everybody is safe. Hannon advances to second. Bean is aboard with the single. That'll bring up Shane Cronin, the pitcher. Kester's really matured. Last year, he would have picked that ball up and thrown it. He had no chance on that play. Steve Simos, the catcher, will head out to give Cole Glassburn some words of wisdom. No outs for the Wolverines. Two on here in the top of the fourth. A five to four Hillers lead, but Westwood is threatening. Glassburn takes a long look at second and deals. Inside, one and oh. Didn't miss by much. That's fouled into the backstop, one and one. Umpires call them tight for both sides. One, one pitch. Gets a piece of this one, hit in the left field, and that is going to be caught. By Rankatori, and both runners are going to return to their bases, one away. He got a good read on that one. The ball was tailing away from him. The ball hit off a left-hander's bat. I'm going to bring up Kevin McDonald, the cleanup hitter, the first baseman for the Wolverines. And we have an official's timeout here. Pinch hitter, maybe? Oh, so nope. Still Kevin McDonald. So just a umpire stoppage here. Two on, one out for Westwood. Line up and the pitch. Down low, gets away from the catcher. Both runners are going to advance. Wild pitch there. Just a breaking pitch that didn't make, quite make it. And you got two runners in scoring position with one out for Westwood. There's a strike. The 2 1 pitch. In there for strike two. Cole probably gives up 50 pounds to Brendan Kelly, but he's got to be thrown in the mid 80s. The 2 2. Low and outside, full count. It's an awful close pitch to take. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit in the air up the right side. Is it catchable? No. Good effort, however, by Barker Hook. Donald steps back in. It's fouled away. That was the quick pitch. Two 
on, one out for Westwood. The Hillers leading five to four in the top of the fourth. Check in at second, runners back safely. Risky check in with Hannon over at third. I don't know where the runner could have went there. Well, just in case he threw the ball and the ball was bobbled at second, he could have made it. That's down low, gets away from Simos, but he's quick to gather it up. That'll fill up the count. Coach Simos may be playing mind games with the hitters. He's telling them to throw that pitch again. Batter obviously hurt him. And that is up the left side and foul. Good battle here between Kevin McDonald and Cole Glassburn. Line up and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop. Count remains full. Good at bat for McDonald. Cole Glassburn's thrown everything so far in this at bat. Set to deliver. There's strike three. Got him looking two away. It'll bring up Cal Guarino, the third baseman. Cole Glassburn trying to work out of a bit of a jam here in the fourth inning. Two runners reach with no outs. And we had a fly out to left field and a strikeout. Cole's got a lot of confidence in that sidearm pitch. And Guarino gets a piece of this one. That'll get into left field. One run is in, another run being waved around. And Westwood has reclaimed the lead, a two RBI single for Cal Guarino, and it's a six to five ball game. John Hannon and Jimmy Bean come around to score. And we'll see if Glassburn stays out there. I'd imagine Coach Samuels will at least let him finish the inning. I was kind of surprised. I thought it was gonna be a low scoring affair with Kelly and Cronin going at it today, but Turned out to be just the opposite of that. Ryan Shea steps in. That's fouled into the backstop. 0 oh and 1. Well, back and forth we go. Runner with a slight lead at first. Breaking pitch inside, 1 and 1. So far, Cole hasn't thrown that curveball for a strike yet. Glassburn stepped off the mound, runner back to first. Line up in the pitch. Just outside, two and one. Set to deliver. That is down low. Simos lost it for a moment. Three and one is the count. Very stressful inning for Glassburn. Certainly is. There's a strike. Full count. Oh, Westwood scored four runs. In the top of the third, and they have added two more here. A six to five lead for the Wolverines. Down low, runner taking off from first, but it won't matter, it's a walk to Ryan Shea. Two on, two outs. Cam Dayton, the right fielder, will step in. Set to deliver. Just outside. 
One and oh count. Well, lengthy affair so far. This game, an hour and 15 minutes old. Line up and the pitch. Down low. Those high stretch pitches that are equivalent to an extra half a pitch each one he throws. Glasburn set to deliver the 2 0 pitch. He winds and deals. Swing and a miss. Had a good rip at that pitch. Glassburn glances over at second and delivers. Down low. Glassburn looked at Coach Simos thinking that was a strike. Three and one is the count. Warm up activity at Westwood bullpen. And there's a called strike. Full count. Cam Dayton so far has singled and was hit by a pitch last inning. Fouls that one away. Count remains full. Pitching from behind definitely takes its toll on the pitcher. He's been pitching from behind most of this inning. Last burn, glances at second and deals inside. And that is a walk. Base is loaded. I don't know about that decision with that pitch call. He hasn't thrown it for a strike yet. We'll bring up Dan Delory, the left fielder. Kyle Guarino over at third. Ryan Shea at second and Dayton over at first. Oh and one. Cal Guarino had the two RBI single to put Westwood back on top. And we're gonna have a conversation on the mound as the assistant coach as well as Steven Simos comes out to talk with Cole Glassburn. Lori steps back in and is set for the next pitch. Glassburn deals up high. One and one is the count. And he'll get a piece of this one to right field. That'll get down for a hit. One run is in, a second run being waved around, and two runs will score for Westwood. And advancing to second is DeLore. A two RBI double there for DeLore. Perfectly placed hit. Cam Dayton's up to third. It's an eight to five Westwood lead now. Jacob Nunez, the catcher, will step in. Four runs last inning for Westwood. Four runs this inning for Westwood as that's fouled away. Nunez is 0 for 2 so far today. This is the second straight inning Westwood has batted around. Outside. Again, Cole looks over. He wanted that pitch. Got a very tight window, this umpire. 1-1. One, one. In there for a strike. One and two. One, two pitch. And this is a fair ball, slow roller, picked up by the third baseman. He bobbles it and drops it. Everybody's safe and another run scores. Dayton comes around to make it a nine to four game. That would have been a tough play to make anyway. An RBI for Jacob Nunez. Delore advances to third. I'm gonna give that a single. Yeah, that was a tough one to handle. Cole's gonna be 
shaking his head a little bit. He's had a couple of balls that were slowly hit. That would ordinarily have been outs, but he's given up his fair share of hard hit base hits. Up high. You scoring that a single, Larry? I am. The error? I am. Kid would have beat it out anyway. I think so. Well, maybe. Up high. Two and oh. Five runs have scored in this fourth inning for Westwood. It's a nine to five ball game. Hillers will have to get the bats going once again. And therefore, a strike runner takes off from first, and the ball will get into center field. And another run comes around to score for Westwood on the air and throw. I don't think the middle infielders were ready for that. That was kind of a delayed steal. I think he was hoping for the error so the run could come around to score. Sixth run of the inning for Westwood. This is ripped into left field. That'll get down for a hit. Runner being waved around for the Wolverines, and it's an 11-5 ball game. That's going to be an RBI double for John Hannon, the leadoff hitter. Wolverines having themselves quite an inning here in the fourth. Doesn't look like Cole Glassburn's fooling anybody today, at least from Westwood hitter's perspective. Jimmy Bean, the shortstop, will step in. Time called by Coach Simos. Will he take the baseball? He does have Connor Kelly in right field today. He is oh. indeed going to take the baseball. That'll be it for Cole Glassburn. An 11-5 Westwood lead. We'll take a timeout on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Third pitcher of the game for the Hopkinton Hillers, Pat Breton into the game while well, he was the second baseman to start. He'll take over on the mound. Cole Glassburn moves over to second base. And stepping up to hit is Jimmy Bean, the shortstop. H Camp Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. You can find me there, too. Certainly could. Pat Breton, a 3.50 ERA, one appearance on the mound. The junior, I think. Fastball, curveball pitcher, according to Coach Simos' pre-season scouting report. Breton has thrown two innings so far this season. He's given up two hits, two runs, one of which was earned. Three walks and struck out three. So the umpire having a discussion with Coach Simos and I think I overheard him say he loses the DH. But Brendan Kelly wasn't hitting in the lineup. So we'll see what Pat Breton can do here to try to stop the bleeding in this inning. Seven runs have scored for the Wolverines here in this top half of the fourth. And it's an 11 to five lead for Westwood. Wolverines were one and one coming into today's game. The Hillers four and one. Well, the game was moving along quite nicely until the, uh, the dam broke. Looks like we'll have another lengthy affair here today for Hillers baseball, the lineup and the pitch. Of course, yesterday they got a nice five to three win over Bridgewater Raynham. Also known as the torture game. Right, John? Lineup and the pitch. Yeah, I heard there was a lot of pickoff attempts in that game. <laughs> 
The most I've ever seen, maybe 40. The scoop was the pitchers had not thrown over the game before and got yelled at by the coach, and so they overdid it yesterday. 2-0 pitch outside. 3-0. and Runner on second still for the Wolverines. Two outs in the inning. Not only were there a lot of pickoffs yesterday, there were more mound visits than I've ever seen in a high school game. The bunt is pulled back, and that's a strike. Three Interesting. And one. Bunting with two out. Yeah, he might have just uh, had the bunt there and never planned on using it. That's down low. He'll draw the walk. Two on, two outs. Shane Cronin, the starting pitcher, will step in. Gil Garrett came into the game to take over pitching duties last inning for Westwood. And we might see a third Westwood pitcher next inning. We'll have to wait and see. They've had warm up action for a good amount of time. First pitch is a strike. Oh, and one. Breton working from the stretch. Inside. Well, I was expecting to see a pitching masterpiece today, and I was a little disappointed. The 1-1. One, one. And this is hit. Into center field, that'll get down. Lead runner being waved around, and the throw in will not be in time, and the run will come around to score. An RBI single for Cronin, and it's a 12 to five game. Ambrosino fielded that ball in center field, came up, looked to throw to third base, but third base had been abandoned. There was nobody there. Kevin McDonald, the cleanup hitter, steps in for his fourth time in the game, second time this inning. Westwood has batted around plus some. Well, Coach Simos just told his son to, to throw Cronin out if he decides to take off. Just throw him out. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Twelve to five, Westwood lead. But we still have a few innings left to play, and if the Hillers' bats get going like they did last inning. Who knows? Could be here at eight o'clock. They might have or. to move down to the turf field and throw on those lights. Line up and the pitch, outside. No warm-up activity in the Hiller bullpen. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. One and one. And I think for the moment this is going to be uh, Breton's game. Down low, nearly got away from Simos, but a nice job gathering it up. Two and two is the count. Stevie always solid behind the plate. He's pretty solid wherever you put him on the field. That's fouled away. Be on the backstop. No report of the girls' softball game yet? Not as of right now. We'll certainly let you know if we hear anything. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike and that will retire the side in the top half of the fourth, but not before a whole lot of runs come around for Westwood. Eight runs in the inning and they lead it 12 to five as we head to the bottom of the fourth on H camp. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School as we continue on into the bottom of the fourth. Westwood leading the Hillers 12 to five after an eight run top half of the inning. Due up for the Hillers is eight, nine, and one. Alex Barker-Hook, Pat Breton, and Ben McKenzie. 
It's an awful messy scorebook you got there, Tom. Certainly is. You're gonna have to take a half an inning to recap that half inning. I think we'll hold off on that. <laughs> all right. That's just a challenge. Westwood scored eight runs. That's all the viewers need to know. I got to get home in time for Jeopardy. Uh, might be in Jeopardy at this point. Well, guy's over a million dollars already. Alex Barker Hook awaits the pitch. Outside, new pitcher for Westwood, Mike Giovino out there, the third pitcher of the game for the Wolverines. one -oh pitch, swing and a miss. Well, that, you can't get an eight run homer, so just one hit at a time. No real pressure on the Westwood pitcher. Got an eight run lead. Seven run lead. Sevens. I flunked Matt, Tom. <laughs> Seven and five is 12, right. Two and one is the count. Juvino delivers, and this is hit in the air over to right field, and that'll drop in front of everybody. That was a tough ball to play. Alex Parker Hook is aboard with a leadoff single. Wasn't particularly hard hit. It was about 120 foot down the line. And Bobby McGuire is going to step in to hit for Pat Breton. It's a huge gap in right center field. If he gets it down in right center, he can he can run all day, all afternoon. What a shift! Wind up and the pitch, and that is a fair ball. The throw to second, they'll get the lead runner. So a fielder's choice there. Runner called fair ball. Uh, umpire called it a fair ball. The ball was spinning on the home plate. That should be foul, shouldn't it? I think home plate is fair. I guess it is, yeah. And I don't know why they felt they needed to tag the runner. It was a forced play. But in any case, McGuire's aboard on the fielder's choice. One away. But McKenzie to step in. No, foul ball. Ooh, they're going to change the call. It's a foul ball. The suspense keeps on building. Westwood coach now asking for uh, for information. Why do I get the feeling this game's going to have a wild finish? Bobby McGuire will step back in. I was always under the impression that home plate was in fair territory. We'll have to look at the rule books. Go right ahead. <laughs> Giovino working from the stretch. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the infield grass, throw to second for a one, that's all they'll get. So, in any case, after all that, it will be a force out anyhow. One on, one out, Ben McKenzie to step in. been so long since Ben McKenzie's up I think he had that weird uh, weird swing at a pitch for strike three line up in the pitch maybe tonight on H cam you can view meet the candidates night oh hosted by the Hopkinton women's club get to meet some of the candidates in this year's town election a pitch down low that starts at 7 p.m. On each cam. Is that different from town meeting? Kenzie awaits the pitch. Outside. Three and O oh is the count. And there's a strike. 
Well, according to Wikipedia, home plate is in fair territory. But other than that, it's just the same as the ground. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the left side. That'll get down for a base hit. Lead runner going to head over to third, and that's where he will stop. It'll be runners on second and third with one out for the Hillers. A good piece of hitting there by Ben McKenzie. Bobby McGuire over at third. McKenzie at second. Steven Simos to the plate. Stevie Simos hit that long home run his last time up. He certainly did. Crushed it over the center field fence. That pitch is outside one and oh. As soon as you said that, the center fielder backed up three or four steps. <laughs> so is that the guy that hit the ball over my head? And he'll get a piece of this one into right field. It goes. A run around to score. It's a 12 to 6 ball game. An RBI single for Stevie Samos. The ball just explodes off his bat. Bobby McGuire around to score. Ben McKenzie up to third. Tommy Ambersoni to the plate. And you know what they say about baseball it ain't over till it's over. I think it was uh, Yogi Bear that said that. He played for the Yankees, didn't he? That's right. Stevie Simos is always a threat to steal. Line up and the pitch. Inside, 1 and 0. Oh. Tommy Ambersoni is 1 for 2 today. Double last inning and scored a run. Fans starting to trickle in from their commute from Boston. There's a called strike, 1 and 1. Tommy thought about it. Runners on first and third for the Hillers. One out. A run has scored to make it a 12 to 6 ball game. In favor of Westwood. That pitch just outside, two and one. Giovino from the stretch. And that's fouled away. Two and two. It's 5.31 in Boston, Tom. It's been a long game so <laughs> far. Almost two hours old. We're still in the fourth inning. It's 5.31 here. We still have a whole lot more baseball to be played. I have a feeling. Line up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one to right field. It goes, and what a catch by the right fielder. The runner from third is going to tag and score. It's a 12 to seven ball game. Tommy Ambersoni gets the job done. A sacrifice RBI fly out to score Ben McKenzie. Simos remains at first. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori. Yeah, he was uh, halfway to second base and then was reading the ball in the right fielder and saw he caught it and scampered back. Gets a piece of this one to left field it goes. That'll get down for a base hit. Simos heading to third, and that's where he will stay. Runners on the corners with two outs for the Hillers. Nice play by the left fielder to cut that ball off. Connor Kelly will step in, the right fielder. He's having a good day. He's one for one with a sacrifice RBI ground out. He doubled last inning, which drove in a run, and he also scored a run. Well, things starting to get interesting once again here. Cole Glassburn on deck. That pitch outside. One and O. Oh. Looks like we have some little leaguers hoping to use this field soon. But this game's not quite over yet. As that's fouled away. One and one. Well, I think they're too little to play on this big field, but maybe it's just practice. I think so. 
Kelly's dad, I think, is from the old country. I saw Brian Kelly talking with Mr. Kelly over here. Breaking pitch outside, two and one. That was a breaking pitch that didn't break. Line up and the pitch. Kelly gets a piece of this one to left field. It goes over the head of the left fielder. One run is already in. And the lead runner behind him will stop at third. And it'll be an RBI double for Connor Kelly. A great piece of hitting there. Simos came around to score. Rankatori up to third. And it's a 12 to eight ball game. Somebody once said it ain't over till it's over. Who, who was that? That was me about five Tom minutes Nappy. ago. Cole Glassburn will step in to hit for Bobby Pagliuca. Taylor's lost the DH. He had a double in yesterday's contest. I was inside, one and oh. He's hitting about 825 this year. Got a small sample size. He was hitting a 750 heading into the week, three for six. That's followed off the catcher. Ouch. Good sportsmanship there by Glassburn. A check on Nunez. The umpire's going to give him a little bit of time, and there's warm up activity down the Westwood bullpen. Well, I'd say things maybe starting to get a little too close for comfort for Westwood. The two men in scoring position for Glassburn. He's heading to Catholic University next year. He'll become a cardinal. Maybe the Pope. One and one. Fouled into the backstop. Wasn't cheated with that swing. Ryan Kester waiting on deck. Runners on second and third for the Hillers. Two outs. Hillers have plated three runs in this inning. Three very much needed runs as they went into the inning, trailing by seven. They have cut the deficit to four, down low. The lefty awaits the pitch. And he will hit this one high in the air. That's going to head over to shallow center field and be caught by the shortstop. And that'll retire the side in the bottom of the fourth. But the Hillers play three runs in the inning. And it's a 12 to eight Westwood lead as we head to the top of the fifth on H cam. New pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers, or ex excuse me, Pat Breton <laughs> remains out there for the Hopkinton Hillers for his second inning of work. I'm just getting so used to new pitchers coming into this game, Larry. Top of the fifth inning, due up for Westwood is five, six, and seven. Cal Guarino, Ryan Shea, and Cam Dayton. As Guarino will step in, he's one for three so far at the plate. He had an RBI single in the fourth as part of an eight run Westwood inning. A 12 to eight Westwood lead. The Hillers responded with three runs of their own in the bottom of the fourth. And we have ourselves a ball game. 20 runs scored between the two. 12 plus eight. Breton delivers, fouled into the backstop. Oh and one. This game approaching the two hour mark. Line up and the pitch, upstairs, one and one. Up high, two and one. Got to bring it down a little bit. Metro West Daily News had a survey yesterday looking for the softball player of the week. Juliana Cedio was a nominee. 
And that is going to be a hit batter. Ooh, that hurt. Cal Guarino will get the free pass to first. I, I felt that yeah, one from I felt that one. Yeah, so. You're very empathetic. I felt that one too. Ouch. Well, I'll bring up Ryan Shea, the center fielder. So lead runner on for Westwood. Lead hitter on, I should say. Two up next, Cam Dayton. Ryan Shea so far is one for two with a walk. And a run scored. Checking at first, runner back safe. That was an I know you there throw. Wasn't his best pickoff move. At least I hope not. Breton from the stretch. Down low. One and oh. Checking at first. And the runner slides back just safe. I think it hit him. I think it did. I well, got hit in the back and then he got hit somewhere around the legs. That was getting beat up over there. That was a good pickoff throw there. Breton set to deal. Up high. Two that, and oh. That's where he's been. He's been high. He deals, and this is hit in the air over to center field towards the fence, and that is going to be gone. A two-run homer. It's a 14-8 Westwood lead as Ryan Shea goes yard. Again, that looked like that was going to be caught, and it just carried and carried and carried. Just when you think this game can't get any crazier. Cam Dayton will step in. There is some warm-up activity finally down in the Hiller bullpen. I thought I saw Josh Fisher stirring down there. He had uh, an inning of work yesterday. There's a strike. That was about as generous a strike call as he's given all game. The 0-1, hit high in the air. It's going to go towards center field and it will be caught by the right fielder who was able to range way to his left to make the catch. Out number one, nicely done by Kelly. I think they got lost up in by the sun. Going to be a replacement for Cole Glassburn. Dan Delory will step in, the left fielder. Am I hearing 15 is replacing Cole Glassburn? That is Chase Doherty. Ty Doherty's brother. So Chase Doherty enters the game for the Hillers. Takes over at second base. At this point, I think Coach Simos wants to get as many players into the game as he can. I think he wants to see how small we can write in our scorebooks. Chase Doherty, a junior. Line up in the pitch to Delory on the ground, up the middle, and it's bobbled by the shortstop. He will be safe at first. A one-out single, and that'll bring up Jacob Nunez, the catcher. Breton won after that one with his meat hand there. I don't know whether it hit him or not, but that was going to be an impossible play for Ben McKenzie to make. He squares the bunt, pulls it back, and takes ball one. A 14-8 Westwood lead here in the top of the fifth. Inside, runner takes off from first, throw to second in time. Dead. 
Great throw from Simos. They catch Delory trying to steal. Two away. It wasn't even close. The ball was there. He just slid right into his glove. Line up in the pitch. And there for a strike. Set to deliver. And Bretton deals strike two. Bretton to the set. Line up and the pitch. Down low. Good block by Stevie. A one and two count. Uh, Nunez, who is one for three today, singled and scored a run last inning, which seems like a decade ago at this point. At least a decade. Up high. And he's going to draw the walk to a walk. That'll bring up John Hannon. He's been up, what, for four or five times today? This will be his fifth plate appearance. Mm. Well, Ryan Shea hit a two-run homer for Westwood this inning to put the Wolverines on top by six. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the left side, but foul. I think there's two little league teams down there. They must have been having a planned scrimmage, but they're not going to get on the field for, well, maybe another half hour, 45 minutes or so. Yellers have the last chance at uh, the Wolverines. The 0 1. Down low gets away from Simos. And the runner at first, Nunez, advances on the wild pitch. One one up high. Coach Simo still coaching, giving some encouragement to Breton. Swing and a tip for strike two. Well, with the way the Hillers are hitting today. I don't think this game's quite over yet. Might not be. Wolverines had some warm-up activity in their bullpen. Down low. Stevie's earning his pay behind the plate. Full count now. On Hanlon, who's having a good day at the plate. And he'll rip this one into center field. That'll get down. Lead runner being waved around. And it's going to be a 15 to eight game. Oh. And safe at second with the RBI double is Hannon. And he kind of tumbled towards second base. I think he got a little tripped up. Yeah, he didn't take a straight line to second base. It was one of those gopher holes I think his cleat hit. Rolled into second base. I'll bring up Jimmy Bean, the shortstop, the Westwood coach going to check on him. John Hannon once again drives in a run for his second time today. That was the second double of the game as well. It's always an athletic trainer roaming around. He's two for three on the day with a pair of walks. Jimmy Bean, who's stepping in right now, is two for three with a walk. Hoping to add some insurance for the Wolverines or maybe put this game closer to mercy contention. That's a thought. What is the mercy rule? 12 runs. Oh. Line up and the pitch. All the way.
Looks like the uh, Hopkins and girls softball team has uh, completed their uh, battle. Breton set to deliver. Up high. The Hopkinton 22 to 10 victory by way of mercy against the uh, Westwood Wolverines. They're really wow. putting up some monstrous, monstrous offensive numbers. They certainly are. I'd imagine they are leading the TVL. Oh, at least in runs scored. They beat up on Holliston 25 to five in their opener. 2-1 pitch. In there for a strike. Two and two. Time called by the umpire. I think we're going to have a pinch runner here for Westwood. Yeah. He, he, he looked like he was uh, limping from that Roll in the second base. And a little shook it up. He had a good day. Certainly did. Coming in a pinch run is going to be Eamon Doherty. Jimmy Bean set to step back in. Fire, getting everything squared away. He's earning his money today. It certainly is. 2-2 two, two count. Pitch outside. Oh, Westwood will be Back in action tomorrow against Dover Sherborne. It's down low, and the walk is drawn by Jimmy Bean. Got right-handed action down the Hopkins in bullpen. I can't tell who it is. Shane Cronin will step in. Runners on first and second. This is hit high in the air over to left field. Battling the sun, but making the catch is Rankatori for the third out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the fifth. Westwood leading Hopkinton 15 to eight on H cam. Bottom of the fifth inning due up for the Hillers. Eight, nine, and one. Ryan Kester to start things off. Alex Barker hook after him, and then Pat Breton. New pitcher for Westwood. Fourth pitcher of the game for the Wolverines. EJ Nevels into the game. Try to close things out. EJ Nevels. And there's strike one. That's a baseball name for you. A lot of legs out there. He's going to throw a lot of arms and a lot of legs. He's a lanky right-hander. Outside, one and one. Ryan Kester having a good day at the plate. Two for two today. A pair of singles and a run batted in. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. Two and one. You can have a lot of velocity, but if you can't find the plate, it will make for a longer afternoon. EJ. Nevels. Leg lift and the pitch down low. It's a 55 footer right there. He may be a little amped up, might be an underclassman. He's got a lot of runs to work with though. Certainly does. Leg lift and the pitch. Up high, ball four. Lead off walk to start off the bottom of the fifth. Alex Barker Hook will step in. He is 1 4 2 on the day. Why 
Wind up and the pitch. Filed into the backstop. 0 oh and 1. The 0 1 pitch outside. Well, up next for the Hillers, they'll be on the road tomorrow in Medway. You going to that game? I will not be, uh -huh. unfortunately. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the left side. That'll get through the gap. Lead runner going to be stopped at second. So it'll be Kester over at second. Parker Hook is aboard at first. Two on, no outs. And Pat Breton. Pat Breton stepping in. Can the Hillers get another rally going? Well, Nebels finds himself with a couple of runners on base without retiring anybody. Ben McKenzie on deck, the ever so dangerous one. Is it me or is it getting a little bit more crowded here? I think it is. People at home must have been watching the game, so let's get out of the park and watch it live, live. Yeah, it's still a good hour left. There's a the strike. 0 oh, and 1. Neville's working from the stretch. Leg lift and the pitch. And that is going to be a fair ball and no, the umpire is going to say foul? It hit him in the box. Ah, all right. Looks like he got him on the toe, the way he's walking. So it'll be an 0 and 2 count. Hope he's okay. I think Breton was hoping the ump wouldn't notice there. <laughs> well, we got the athletic trainer coming over just in, just in case. Yo, 2 And this is ripped into center field. That'll get down for a base hit. Kessler going to be stopped at third, and it's going to be bases loaded for the Hillers with no outs. Craziness today at Hopkinton High School. Ben McKenzie will step in with a huge opportunity here to get the Hillers right back in the game. One swing of the bat, he can bring it within three runs. And he's got the power to do it. This game may be two hours and 15 minutes old, but I think it's far from over. There's a strike. I don't think Ben was expecting that. He was expecting the, the heater, and he got the Uncle Charlie instead. Line up and the pitch. And McKenzie gets a piece of this one over to left center. It goes past the dive of the center fielder. Kester comes around to score. And the runner behind him going to be stopped at third. But now they got him in a pickle, so they're going to send him. He slides in. He's tagged out at the plate. But one run does score for the Hillers. An RBI single for McKenzie. He advances on the throw in. Barker Hook was thrown out trying to score. And up to third is Breton. Well, they oh. can't challenge now, but Coach McKenzie did touch the runner coming around third base, so. That'll bring up Steven Simos. It's a 15 to nine ball game. And this is exactly who you want at the plate if you're the Hillers. Two, four, three today. An RBI single last inning, a home run in the third. He grounded out in the first. He's maybe a triple shot of a cycle. Maybe. He needs the double and the triple. Yeah. Line up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, and it is caught by the second baseman. Two away. Not what he wanted to do. Certainly not. I think he was hoping to... Golf that one right over the head of the second baseman. Tommy Ambersoni will step in. 
So it's runners on second and third with two outs for the Hillers. Amber Sony's had a good day so far. Sacrifice RBI ground out, as well as a double. And a run scored, that pitch down low. To Rancatori waiting on deck in case Ambrosino gets on, plates a couple of runs, hopefully. The 1 0. Oh. Chin music. Yes, sir. 2 and 0. Oh. Temperature has dropped noticeably. Inside. Well, first base is open, so Nevels could be giving him nothing substantial purposely. I think he's just trying to find the plate. There's strike one. You're pretty good with the clicker there. I'm losing track of the count. A lot of pitches thrown today. Certainly has been. No 3-1. Oh. And that hits him. Ooh, that hurt me. Sure we picked up the sound of that on the camera. Amber Sony will march down to first, and the bases are loaded for Drew Rancatori. A lot of padding where he got hit. Rancatori is one for two today. First, some words of encouragement for Nevels from the shortstop. Is that EJ Nevels or AJ Nevels? EJ. EJ Nevels. Line up and the pitch. Down low. Rancatori can be patient with Nevels because he's having a tough time finding the plate. A decent enough velocity, but if you don't get it over, what good does it do you? A 1 0 pitch. Inside. Two and oh. Drew Rancatori, a member of the post 77 American Legion team out of Ashland last year. Nettles delivers outside. Oh, not even close. I thought that one was going to come for John. <laughs> Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for this long Hiller baseball game. John Ritz on camera. It's been an action-packed game, though. 15-9 Westwood lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Bullpen activity for the Wolverines. Hillers with the bases loaded with two outs, and that pitch is up high, and a run will score. Hillers are now in double digits. And what was the score of the girls' game? 20-something? Breton comes around to score. McKenzie up to third. Amber Sony up to second. It's a 15-10 ball game. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, will step in. And there is now warm-up action for the Westwood Wolverines. As the Hiller is once again threatening to hop back into this ball game. Looks like uh, Dylan Pollen is getting loose, or Dylan uh, Perlanes, excuse me. Well, Nevels ought to stop nibbling. Throw the ball in the strike zone. Pitch to Connor Kelly down low. Nice stop by the catcher. Nunez. It's been a rough day for the pitchers today. <laughs> Hillers keep battling. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike, one and one. Kelly had a gapper last at bat in left center field. Yeah, he's showing a, off his power. There's a pair of doubles today, a sacrifice RBI ground out, and a run scored. And he'll get a piece of this one up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second, and they will get the force out to retire the side. But the Hillers played three runs in the inning, and it's a 15 to 10 ball game as we head to the top of the sixth on H cam. Pat Breton returns to the mound for the Hillers. To start off this top half of the sixth inning, it's been a wild game here at Hopkinton High School today. A 15 to 10 Westwood lead. Hillers still have two more chances to get back in the game. Stepping in 
for the Wolverines is Mike Giovino. He's hitting in the spot of Kevin McDonald, the first baseman. And he'll get a piece of this one. And that is going to land on the grass. And Giovino will reach safely. A lot of blood on that ball. No, uh, Breton didn't move to cover first base. He was sort of looking at that ball spinning. And Barker Hook was looking at the ball. Was, Chase Doherty was looking at the ball. It was just an awkwardly hit ball. As Cal Guarino steps in. And he'll rip this one up the left side, bobbled by Kester, but he regains control, throws the second, gets the lead runner. One away. Guarino reaches on the five to four force out. And he'll bring up Ryan Shea, the center fielder. Kester, uh, I don't know why he hesitated. Should have went right to second with that ball. He looked to first and then threw to second. Well, we got one out very quickly. Pick over, safe. Not a bad move. Well, Breton uh, maybe has settled down a little bit. I think Coach Simos is going to ride him out. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled away into the catcher's glove, 0 and 1. He's not too happy. The ball probably looked like a watermelon coming in. Right about eye high. And there's strike two. 0 and 2. 15 to 10, Westwood lead here in the top of the sixth. One out, runner on first. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught for the second out by Rankatori. Runner stays put at first base. Marino over at first. That'll bring up Cam Dayton, the right fielder. Are we going to see E.J. Nebels come to the plate at some point? We'll have to wait and see. Mercifully, there's two outs. Up high. Set to deliver. In there for a strike. One and one. Crowd the plate, that's kind of what happens to you. He's got his hands hanging right over the plate. From the stretch. Strike two. One and two count on Cam Dayton. His back foot looks like it's almost even out of the batter's box. Or what was the line demarking the batter's box? Breton set to deliver. Up high. Coach Simo still coaching, even though he's down by five with two attempts at the plate left. Still coaching. Wants Breton to compete. The 2 2. Upstairs. Full count. Win the battle. Win the battle here. Breton from the stretch. And that's a walk. 2 0 walk. Two on for Westwood. Dan DeLore, the left fielder, will step in. I think everybody in the Westwood lineup's had a hit today. Or certainly been on base. And that is inside. And both runners will advance as it gets by Samos, a wild pitch. So now it's runners on second and third for Westwood with two outs. One thing about the new brick wall that was built last year, you can get a nice true bounce off of it if it gets behind you. Leg lift and the pitch inside. 
Wind turned around, now it's blowing straight out. Well, this game is officially two and a half hours old. <laughs> Brett and Deals. Oh, that looked Hello. good, that looked good. having a hard time throwing strikes here. There's a strike, three and one. The umpire wanted to know whether he could see this game on TV. He'll see that he missed that previous pitch. And this is hit high in the air over to left field and it is caught for the third and final out of the top half of the sixth. To the bottom of the six we go. Westwood leading Hopkinton 15 to 10 on each cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, EJ Nevels remains in the game on the mound for Westwood. And to hit for Hopkinton is Chase Doherty, the junior. He took over for uh, Cole Glassburn. His father now got his iPhone ready to snap off a shot. Pitch outside, one and oh. This is Chase's third plate appearance of the season. Nebels wasn't even close on that pitch. He's 0 for 1 overall. There's a strike. 1 and 1. Warm up activity in the Westwood bullpen. I might have said that's five or six times already today. Six, seven, and eight hitters for the Hillers. Swing and a miss. Doherty, Kester, and Barker Hook. I think the JV team has finished up their game. Coming up to watch the varsity. And this is going to trickle up the left side. Glove by the third baseman, throw to first. Was he in time? Yes, he was. Five to three for out number one. Nice play by the third baseman. That ball was beaten into the dirt. Ryan Kester will step in. He's 2-4-2 two two today with a walk. A run scored and a run batted in. Takes a strike. I call that one a ball, a little bit outside. Oh. If I could read his body language. I thought he was signaling a strike. There's a ball. He's telling uh, Nebels to tuck in his shirt there. There is rules about attire. Not for broadcasters, though. 2 0 pitch. Down low, 3 and 0. On deck. ABH, Alex Barker Hook. Well, Kester uh, reaches here. His on base percentage in this game will be a thousand. That means he's got on every single time? That's right. Right, all right. And he will reach. His second walk of the game. One out walk. Alex Barker Hook will step in. And will we see a new pitcher for Westwood? I think we will. E.J. Nevels has seen his last batter. So we'll see the fifth pitcher of the game for the Westwood Wolverines, and we'll let you know who that is when we come back on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this week? once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkeys see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Continuing on in the bottom of the sixth. New pitcher out there for Westwood. It is Jake Pfaff, 
fifth pitcher of the game. As this is hit into right field, that'll get down for a base hit. And the lead runner going to head over to third as the right fielder had some trouble with it. Now Kester thought about scoring his way back to third. It'll be runners on second and third with one out for the Hillers. Kester was being waved home, but the uh, Westwood Wolverine team executed their cutoffs properly and finally held up by uh, Brent McKenzie down there at third base. So a double for Alex Barker Hook. Now we have a pinch hitter for the Hillers. And that pitch is inside to Jarrett. Cameron. Cam, Cam Jarrett in for Bobby McGuire. And there's a strike, one and one. Ben McKenzie waiting on deck. Jarrett played uh, right field yesterday. The 1-1. One, one. There's a strike. A little quick pitch action there from the Westwood pitcher. Didn't one. come to the set. He just went right, right home with it. One and two. Faf set to deal. And this is foul up the right side. Very defensive swing. Ben McKenzie do up next. Hillers two on, one out. Trailing by five. Couple of ducks out there. Base hit will uh, bring them within three. That's fouled away. Fought off that pitch. Wide up and the pitch. This is hit high in the air, over to left field, and that is going back towards the fence. It's caught by the center fielder, runner from third, going to tag and try to score, and he will. It's a four-run game. A sacrifice RBI flyout for Cam Jarrett. It's the second out of the inning. Ryan Kester comes around. Alex Barker hook up to third, Ben McKenzie to the plate. We got people turning in, uh, tuning in from Albany, New York, to watch this battle. Rome, Italy, Albany, New York, Naples, Florida. They're tuning in all over the world. Going worldwide. There's a strike. Might be in the Guinness Book of World Records right, here for longest the, game ever. <laughs> getting some really big ratings. Right up in the pitch. Ooh. Inside, one and one on McKenzie. A little tight. Well, McKenzie's had a good day at the plate. He's two for four overall, an RBI and a run scored. And he's got home run power, that pickup truck out there. And it'll hit this one high in the air to the right side, and it's dropped by the right fielder, and a run comes around to score. Are going to call that foul or fair? Oh, no, foul. All right. First, it is foul. The home plate it umpire had a good look. So foul ball there. That was uh, pretty close out there. The wind definitely toyed with that ball. That's inside. Pitcher wanted that. Two and two is the count on McKenzie. Left fielder shading his eyes out there. And this is ripped up the left side, but foul. Fortunately for Alex Barker Hook, he was able to dance out of the way of that. We would have the athletic direct uh, the athletic trainer out here. Steven Simos do up next. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. Down low and McKenzie draws the walk. 
<laughs> so with two outs and two on, Steven Simos stepping to the plate. I don't know whether uh, Coach Simos wants to put Ben McKenzie in motion and leave first base open, which will leave the Westwood coach um, the chance to give Stevie Simos the four-fingered salute, meaning a free pass down to first base. There's a ball inside to the lefty, Steven Simos. As Ben will be able to steal easy on a right-handed pitcher. Cronin holding Ben McKenzie on at first base. Stevie once again toying with the pitcher, decides to call time. And he's got that power. That's fouled away into the backstop. Good thing Nunez has a chest protector on her. He'd be in big trouble right now. Well, those in attendance certainly getting their money's worth today. And that is going to hit Simos. That'll load up the bases. For the first time this year, after 14 times getting hit last year he gets, finally gets hit by a pitch and guess what the tying run is stepping to the plate Tommy Ambrosoni we're in the bottom of the six the 15 to 11 Westwood lead there's a strike the Hillers have the bases loaded with two outs you're playing Tommy to pull well, they are giving him a gap in uh, right center field. Outside, one and one. Good take, but it's awful close. From the stretch is Faf. Outside. The umpire looked that ball all the way in. Two and one. On Ambersoni. With two out, runners will go on contact. Gets a piece of this one over to left center, and it is going to be caught by the left fielder for the third out of the inning to the top of the seventh we go. The Westwood Wolverines leading the Hopkinton Hillers 15 to 11 on HCAM. Top of the seventh inning, two up for Westwood is the nine one and two hitters. Jacob Nunez will step in. Well, so far this game at the two hour and 45 minute mark. And a new pitcher for the Hopkinton Dillers, Cam Jarrett is out there. If this were a nine inning game, it'd probably be about three hours and 30. <laughs> I'd say about four hours. Well, there's warm up activity down in the Westwood bullpen. We get a lanky lefty down there. Maybe come in and close out the game. This is what, uh, Nunez at the plate? It is. Outside. This is fifth or sixth time up. One and O oh is fifth plate appearance for Nunez. Inside. Nunez went for three on the day with a walk, two runs scored. Jared, a sophomore, has got a Better than average fastball, according to Coach Simos, and hits Nunez. So, the lead hitter on for Westwood, and that'll bring up the top of the order. And it looks like we're gonna have a pinch hitter here. So, pinch hitter stepping in. For the Westwood Wolverines, it's Jake Pfaff who took over pitching duties, and he takes a strike. Oh yeah, Jake, absolutely. Nunez is not a threat to steal over there, but Jarrett's gonna keep him close. It's Cam Jarrett's uh, first appearance on the mound. And strike two. I think he was prepared to see that breaking pitch. But he got the Uncle Charlie. The Acker. Checking at first, runner back. 
He's got pretty quick feet out there. A 15 to 11 Westwood lead here on the top of the seventh. Checking at first, runner back, just safe. Mosquitoes are starting to come out. Uh, only near you. Jared's feet were quick. That was a decent pickoff move there. That's down low. Good cover up by Simos. He's earned his money today, Stevie Simos. Certainly has. They're in dinner tonight with that home run. Mom is down here to watch him play. The lovely Cheryl Simos. Runner with lead out of first. Check in. Runner slides back safe as the ball slips out of the glove of Barker Hook. I don't know why the uh, Westwood catcher, Nunez, would uh, risk getting thrown out at first base, being up by four runs. Inside. A little different arm angle Jarrett threw that pitch at. Two and two is the count. Hit high in the air, foul out of the reach of everybody. There's a souvenir for the little little fellas. Yeah, the little eager almost made the catch over there. They might not get onto the field tonight, though. <laughs> they might kids. not. We are running out of daylight here. Check it out first. Runner back safe. Getting closer and closer and closer with those pickoffs. Upstairs. Just laid off that one. Full count. Those look good. Will he pick over and get uh, Nunez leaning because he knows it's a 3-2 count? And this is ripped into left center. That'll get down for a base hit. It'll be two on with no outs for Westwood. Bring up Jimmy Bean, the shortstop. Or will we see a pinch hitter? Nope, Bean's gonna stay in the game. I think they're in the, the family is in the uh, bourbon business there. His uncle Jimmy Bean. Or is that Bean? It's Bean. Huh. They were in the bean business <laughs> way back in the day. <laughs> right up in the pitch. And there, four strike. Oh, and one. Well, the Westwood bench is still animated, despite being a close to three hour game. Swing and a miss. Pull. Nice Pull. breaking pitch. Uh, Mr. Bean almost has spun himself into the dirt on that one. Cross, I believe, is in action over at the turf fields. Under the lights. And this is up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to second, and they'll get nobody. It was dropped. Coach Simos is not happy with that one. So Jimmy Bean reaches on the error. Up to second is Faf. And Nunez is a third, bases loaded. No outs for Westwood, Shane Cronin stepping in. Infield is in. One swing of the bat here by Cronin. It could put things really out of reach for the Hillers. And that's a fair ball. Steps on home for one, throw to first, and he doubles them up. How about that, a two to three double play. Ain't that something. Now, wasn't that, that ball was picked off of the plate, wasn't it? Earlier they had that issue with the ball being on home plate. They called it foul. Yep, well, not this time, fortunately. Well, we've seen this kid enough today, haven't we? Mike Giovino steps in. Two outs in the inning, runner on third. Hillers trailing by four here in the seventh. The Wolverines trying to add some insurance. 
Jared's breaking pitch is uh, seeming to fool these Westwood hitters. It's just slow and tantalizing enough where they... And this is up the right side, and it's bobbled by the first baseman. He then picks it up, steps on first base, and gets the out. The Hillers coming up on the bottom of the seventh, up next on HCAM. Bottom of the seventh inning, last chance for the Hillers. It's a 15 to 11 Westwood lead. Drew Rankatori stepping in for the Hillers. Four, five, and six to up. Good part of the order to have up if you're Hopkinton. And this is fouled away, 0 oh and 1. Pfaff continues the pitching duties for Westwood. Westwood defensively is just going to be playing for the outs. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. 0 oh and 2. Both catchers taking a beating today. This game just short of three hours old. It's been a long one. 26 runs combined. Whole lot of action. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike three, one away. They'll bring up Connor Kelly. Clears down to their final two outs. Marancatori was set up for that breaking pitch. Threw them all fastballs and then put him on the bench with that backdoor curveball. And this is hit up the left side, foul. That's foul. Oh, and one on Kelly. Good hitter, this Connor Kelly. Chase Doherty on deck. Line up in the pitch. Outside. There's a ball. Aside from being a good hitter, he's got a good eye too. That's fouled away. Call that a strike, despite the fact that Nunez missed it. At least what the umpire gave the strike signal. Yeah, he called that one a strike. Yep, two and two. Outside, full count. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Two way. Pinch hitter. Doherty's going to come up to the plate. Westwood went out away from taking the victory. That was thrown behind him. Uh, I think it's officially three hours old this game. It's it is, 6.45. Yep. Before we get battle pay. Game time temperature was 68 to begin. It's now 58. Swing and a miss. One and one. Tough to lay off that pitch. Letter high fastball. There's a strike. Westwood one strike away from taking the game. Doherty put in the game earlier for uh, Breton. Looks a little overmatched. Swing and a miss. Out number three, and that'll do it. 
The Westwood Wolverines hang on to defeat the Hopkinton Hillers 15 to 11. The Hillers are going to fall to four and two on the season. Westwood now two and one. The final score for the final time. Westwood takes down Hopkinton 15 to 11. For John Ritz on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hiller Baseball on H Camp. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.